Hello, Salam um, um, Thank you, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, as I said, um, I'm Osman Chuma, aka Walker Chuma, and also the co-founder of Mamgo Boys Design Factory, which is a, which is a design studio in Johannesburg and celebrates celebrates African identity um, and and. And we always try and play around or like with every single brief that we get, we always try and, and find a way of um, like showcasing Africa in it. With, with the, today's talk, um, I think it's almost going to be like, almost like a, like a self journey of, of, my, of my life in the design uh, industry. And um, hence why um, I titled it Africa, all the inspiration I need. And, and I, think, I think this journey, one can say it, it, started, it started when I, when I was watching a TED talk, uh, like way back in, <laughs> it's kind of fun to say way back, even though it wasn't that, that, that long time ago, um, like when I was in Boston. Um, and I, I watched this, this TED talk by, by Professor Sakima Fundikwa, and, and it's quite, and he said this part, powerful words with me that, that really, really stayed with me for, for a very long time. Um, and I quote, he said, young African designers need, need to look inward to Africa like for inspiration. And for that, like, like for me, that really like, sparked something in me. And, and for most of my work, that, that has become like almost like... Um, like maybe I can say like a like a DNA into some of the work that I do, and um, and and for this talk I'm going to try and uh, and share that with you, um, um, showing you like some of my work. And I'm quite and I'm quite happy that with some of the places um, like design agencies that I went to, uh, like 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 they've been able to mold that character of me and, and able to like to create um, like some of the work that is African, African inspired. And this is just, just some of my work and I'm not going to talk much about it, but it's, it's, as I said, like, like most of my work, which is, I can say maybe 95% of it, it's like, it has that heritage or like it pays homage to the, to my home, my continent. But first, but first of all, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about about this one. Um, and um, as I said, um, I'm also the, the co-founder uh, of Mamko Bozi, and um, and we got this this um, this brief uh, from one of our clients, and and he wanted he wanted um, a family crest, right? And and in the references that he gave us were were quite Eurocentric and. And we then were like, and then we tried to convince him that like, yes, like most crests that are out there, or even if you had to Google family crest, you will, you will see quite European um, family crests. So then we then, we then tried to convince him to, to go on, on this journey with us to be able to create like, like an African one, like, like the one that talks, that talks to, to his family, that talks to his roots. And because he's, um, he's a Sutu person, uh, he comes from uh, Lesotho. We then reference that the like the like the iconic um, Sutu hat, which is um, um, which is the which is the reference um, on the left, and um, and Bakwena, um, which is which is literally translated to a crocodile, right? And then for us, that was a, a simple. Just a position, putting the two together to create a one nice icon, and the crocodile on its own, the way we designed it, was a way of almost like as if it's a pattern on the head, and the head is is very quite iconic um, in the Basuji. and then that on its own became a nice, a nice identity, and and the beautiful part about this logo design was that um, when we designed. We we're quite happy with it, but then I think I think the joy came afterwards when when the client posted this on Instagram and and the other Bakuen people actually wanted to adopt the logo as their own crest, and then and then of course the 
got the client denied bid. But then that was quite beautiful. And then also another eye opener of, of creating something that like, resonates with people. And, um, and that just showed that, that we're literally like on the right track, like to keep on pushing what we're creating. Um, so a few years back, um, I took part in the 36 Days of Type. And, and I told myself, I'm going to try and create it um, whilst, whilst, referencing, whilst referencing Africa in one way or the other. And, uh, and, and this is what I created, like all these different um, platforms uh, like inspired by, by many different things. And, and one beautiful thing that with this whole journey, like, 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 like it showed me the vastness of Africa. And yes, we talk about how, how Africa is so diverse, but once we unpeel that layer, there's, there's more layers inside it. With this, um, with this project and also with this talk, I'm also just gonna show you how like some of my inspiration also comes from the traditional, um, traditional attires from, from spiritual um, practices, from rituals to, um, to ancient symbols. Uh, to folklore, to basket uh, weaving, even even like um, ancient ancient um, architecture, and and the whole point is that like like how how I tackle like, most of my design stuff is like there's so much like there's so much to there's so much inspiration out there like like for me um, I look I see I see Africa as just as a place. Of vast inspiration and 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 what I know is quite little. It's actually quite nothing compared to what is out there. Um, and and every single time I, I tackle a project, it's actually quite interesting what I'll find out. It's almost like a like a kid who's going out on a on a journey to find something because it's quite interesting. Sometimes I find a lot of things. Sometimes it's like like some of the most amazing things that could be that could be said. So with with this project, I'm not going to talk much about it, but then I'm, I'm just going to pick two. Um, this one, um, which, which literally is, is a letter from three. And, and the reason why I chose this one was because of the, of, of the, of the inspiration. And um, the traditional healers, the traditional healers are, are a vital form of society. Um, Like the traditional healers are um, a part of like the African community, like for thousands of years, and like and they're still up until now. And most people rather go to traditional healers than to to Western medicine uh, doctors. So so for me that was a, that was like a way of saying cool. I can I can find inspiration here. I can create something that people can actually even be able to understand. And then I created the letter from three. Um, or even uh, taking um, like a ritual object, uh, like the Nimba shoulder mask, um, using the inspiration to create um, like the letter from R. And, and there's more, like, the, the, like, like even just the, this project on its own was just quite interesting because it's just fun to literally dig this deep, research about these things, and it's quite beautiful. Like, it's quite amazing. I'm going to take you through my my current my current uh, project right now, uh, which is titled uh, Africa Love Letters, and and this is and this is my own way of celebrating African countries um, as their own um, as they celebrate their their um, independences, and then so then what I do is that um, I create I create almost like logos a branding. Um, to celebrate when a country is going to be celebrating their like their independence um, as a way of it's a, it's a, like a concept ideas. So so yeah, yeah, let's jump to it. And the first one that I did was um, was for Ghana, like when they're celebrating yes, um, when they're ce celebrating uh, sixty three years of independence, and and I used an Adigra symbol that symbolizes strength. And humility, and and work with that symbol to create something quite nice and beautiful, and, and something that and something that um, um, even someone and someone from Ghana would literally be be proud to see. Um, 
And the beautiful uh, story about this is that um, for the day for the day before the day before um, I posted this on Instagram, I actually sent um, actually sent the artwork to one of my friends in Ghana, um, Simon Chawe, and then he was actually quite happy that I actually created something for his country, and and that is a special moment because because as Africans we're all connected like in one way or the other, and that is what this project. Is almost also on our side. I was trying to say that we're all somehow connected and we're all brothers and sisters. So yeah, this was um, like the first one, um, and this is the other one that I did for Zimbabwe. And and I think and I think one of the most things that is quite uh, there's so much pressure is to design something of your own country. And and coming from Zim, almost like every single thing that 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 has the title Zimbabwe, has got the Zimbabwe bird on it, like on every single thing. <laughs> and, and for me, oh, as a designer, it's always a thing of like, trying to create something different. And, 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 for, and for, this, um, like for this logo branding, I then challenged myself, I was like, cool, everyone out there, other people are going to use this Zim bird. How are you going to create it? And then also, how are you going to give some bit of meaning into it? Or how are you going to enhance the meaning? So the one I did was that I then I then dug deep into into the Zim history and then tried to pull out elements that I could uh, get inspiration from. And then I looked at I looked at the Great Zimbabwe ruins, and I was like, "That's beautiful. That's a beautiful story. I could I could actually use the Chevron patterns. That was one aspect of it. And then I also looked at folklore. Um, oh, or the for the spiritual um, rituals, which, which is the story of, of Nyamin Nyamin, the river god. And, and, and as the story goes, Nyamin Nyamin, um, Nyamin, Nyamin um, um, is located um, on the Karipa Dam, and the Batonga people used to pray to Nyamin Nyamin, um, like when things, were, when things were harsh, or when there was a drought, or when they were hungry. Right? And then Nyamin Nyamin would literally offer himself to the people, and then they would actually cut yummy yummy up and then they'll actually go eat, right? And then now taking those two elements, putting them together uh, to create something beautiful. Um, and that's quite beautiful, I think. <laughs> same, goes, uh, same goes with the um, with, um, Makesh figures from, from the IRC by the Sonya um, people. And because the Sonya people believe that um, like spirits like other spirits can be can be reborn, and using using the the head of this figure to create a six and to create this identity, um, and also with this meaning that is literally almost like almost like enhanced through this artwork. Rwanda fifty eight referencing referencing the. Um, the patterns, the patterns um, on the baskets, and they're very quite known, um, like Rwanda and Burundi. They're very quite known, um, like for their beautiful basket weaving that they do with these beautiful geometric black patterns. That that is quite quite intricate and then quite geometric. But at the same time, when you're designing it, it like it almost feels like it's it's a pixel like. Eritrea, and this I used. I use the tabib patterns um, on the on the um, habisha dress, which is which is which is Eritrea's Eritrea's a traditional dress, and using that to create a tough face. And recently. Um, when it was when it was um, Nelson Mandela Day, like for this part, I then I then looked at I then looked at uh, the flag, and then I was like, what about if the flag was able to literally become the typeface? Right? Is it a, is it possible to rotate it and be able to cut it up, almost like cropping it to little pieces to create a typeface? And then I was able to create this typeface and. And it's quite beautiful how sometimes 
this some things that we just see every single day can be can be turned can be turned into something and uh, and and I think this is quite beautiful that um, like when I posted it on Instagram, people were quite happy like, to see how like that that was formed and and even without even putting the flag, like other people were even able to literally pick up that the typeface was created using the flag and. With this talk, I think I think I think the most important thing was like trying to create that, like showing that um, like synergy between uh, the link between now and the past. Um, um, because because I think what I'm, I think what I try and do is that I try and use my my practice to bring the past into the present so that I can enhance it. Um, but then also but then also in a way that people do not forget about it. Um, because as we're moving, moving into a new age, moving into a new time, we tend to forget certain things. And, um, and my way of looking into Africa, looking into my home, into, into other places that I've never been across the continent, it's almost like one is an educational way for myself and also other people who also go um, along with me or, or other people who view my work but also is also also trying to protect um, our, our culture, our tradition, our folklore, our stories, um, many things out there that that we can that we can actually end up telling our, our grandchildren about because because most things are now quite um, are quite disappearing. But but yeah, it's it's quite beautiful and. And thank you. Um, you can check me on on Instagram, on Rockwa Chuma. You'll be able to follow my my current project right now. My current project right now, um, the the love letters, um, Africa love letters, that that's currently running right now. And you can also check out mamkobozdesign.com, and then you'll be able to see some of our client work that we're also trying to create.